In 2003 World Cup Pakistan did only what Pakistan could do. From 2001 to 2003 Pakistan had tried over 21 players to replace the senior players. But only a few put their hand up and made it to the World Cup squad of 2003. With legends like Wakar Younes, Saeed Anwar and Wasim Akram on the verge of retirement, the team looked out of sorts with both bad and ball at times and unfit for the most part of the tournament. In what was a month-long preparation camp for Pakistan in South Africa and Zimbabwe, though they won against Zimbabwe and lost to South Africa, they were coming off six tournament defeats where they failed to reach the final of any tournament in the past two years. In vivid memories of every cricket fan, the Dilkar's bashing of the likes of Akhtar, Akram and Wakar would sum up the tournament for Pakistan. But it all started in the first match of the tournament for Pakistan. The initial phase of the game was just what Pakistan required, getting them down to 86 for 4 on the back of a fury spell by Wasim Akram, who had picked Hayden, Gilchrist and Martin. Only to lose the plot when Ricky Ponting, the Aussie captain, and Andrew Simons came together to stitch a match-winning 100-plus run partnership. It rattled Pakistan by all means. The unfit squad started to show signs of tiring with regular misfields and wavered lengths by the bowlers. Then came the two beamers from Wakar Younes in 48th over of the match. First, an ill-directed beamer that didn't hit Simons and the second where Simons just about got away from being hit on his head. And in between all of that, Wakar had the courage to not even apologize to Andrew Simons. Simons was then furious and confronted Pakistani skipper Younes who was looking out of sorts and got into a heated exchange. The funny part Younes was suspended from bowling any further by the legendary umpire David Shefford on the grounds of law 42.6 which deals with dangerous and unfit bowling upon bowling two beamers and the over needs further to be completed by another bowler who hasn't completed in quota of overs. Post-match referee Cleve Lloyd consulted with the two on-field umpires Shefford and Ashoka De Silva. in a statement released after the match said there would be no additional punishments after it was agreed that the bowlers intentions were not deliberate vakar said the deliveries came about as he searched for yorkers to try and restrict simons who had hammered 143 not out his maiden one day international 100 The Australian all-rounder's innings included 18 fours and two sixes. Simon's stunning knock helped Australia post 310 for 8 in 50 overs. Ian Harvey and Brad Hogg then tore apart the Pakistani batting lineup with some sensational bowling. Harvey took four wickets while Hogg accounted for three. as Pakistan were bowled out for 228 in 44.3 overs. That was just the start of the worst for Pakistan as they went on to lose against India and England before getting knocked out of the World Cup in the group stages, failing to even qualify for Super Sixes. The problem? Again, the players who were way beyond their peak. Only Saeed Anwar with the bat averaged over 40 with over 300 runs while bowlers kept on going for over 5.5 runs per over if the bowling clicked the batting failed as seen against england where they had bundled england out for 234 but couldn't chase the target and when batting clicked the bowling failed as was the case against india where they failed to defend a score of near 300 post the world cup Akram, Younes along with Anwar soon retired leading a new set of players in the squad though it didn't change the fate of the team as they were again eliminated from group stages in 
2006 and 2007 ICC tournaments. All in all, we could see the same pattern in the 2024 T20 World Cup selection where youngsters like Mohammad Haris, Heather Rilly and a few others missed out on selection to Azam Khan, Iftikhar Ahmed and Sahadab Khan who not only look unfit but aren't even in the form as well.